Welcome to Next Step Advanced Sketching Techniques. Today, students, we're going to learn how to sketch out a photorealistic dinosaur. All right, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is create a little uh, floor area, maybe some grass, maybe some uh, dinosaur era flowers. The flowers back when dinosaurs were around. I uh, tended to have one extra petal than they did now. Uh, through evolution, over thousands and thousands of years, the uh, flowers have lost one petal. So petals are a little bit different, or flowers are a little bit different than they were back in the time of the dinosaurs. A fun fact for you, around Cleopatra's time, uh, there were still a few dinosaurs living. Um, if you read some of Cleopatra's diary, uh, she does make note or make mention of uh, a few of these dinosaurs, like the, the world-famous Tyrannosaurus rex, and um, frequently known in Egypt, where Cleopatra was born and raised, um, they did have a world's fair in that region, and uh, I believe that she had a pet uh, dinosaur because she had a vast supply of gold and silver. And she also practiced alchemy, and that helped uh, supplement her riches. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the dinosaur. Today we're going to draw the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The Tyrannosaurus Rex is going to have a sideways, upside-down C for its head to fit the brain. Tyrannosaurus Rex and all dinosaurs had very large brains. Uh, so form follows function. We talked about this in a recent sketch. Uh, we'll talk about this again today. Uh, due to form following function, the cranium of the dinosaur had to be very large. And dinosaurs had very uh, round, very round, almost like a circle eye. Of course, they had eyelids. They are animals, or pardon me, mammals. Well, mammals and animals. And dinosaurs are going to have these big, chomping teeth. And they're going to have two nostrils. We can't see the other one, correct? Correct. Because it's on the other side, see? Now we're going to do the dinosaur neck. We're going to come back and do the dinosaur arms. So we're going to start with the body. As you can see, uh, very similar to the giraffe, the domesticated giraffe, uh, dinosaurs actually had very poor posture. And they got a reputation in the animal world of being kind of lazy, um, but this is actually an unfair uh, stereotype. And dinosaurs had really long uh, tails to lash out at their prey, especially the Tyrannosaurus rex, and little kind of like ball and spikes. Well, one ball on the end here, and then spikes that they could kind of whip around to uh, injure or kind of startle their startle their prey. All right, and then dinosaurs. What we're going to do here is a B shape. Don't be shy with your B, but the lower curve is going to be a little bit smaller than the upper. And we're going to come back up. And the dinosaurs had really long toenails. There's no way for a dinosaur to cut its nails. It can't bend its head down to chew on them, say like a dog can. And uh, dinosaurs, especially the Tyrannosaurus rex, had really weird um, just disproportionately small uh, upper arms. So certainly um, the dinosaur arms would not be something to be scared of. Um, they didn't really have a long reach. And if they tipped over, you can see that th that arm is not long enough to stop them. So dinosaurs, like the Tyrannosaurus rex, who stood on two feet, um, we're susceptible or prone to tipping over to the front. Um, oh, and we need another foot for the other side because we want to honor reality and physics. 
and then this arm is going to be so short we can't even see it on the other side now the devil's in the details now we're going to add some ah, some shading some some subtle lines to make this oh and dinosaurs uh, did have spikes on the back there um, this is to protect from birds attempting to land uh, now you can see almost like flipping a coin 50 50 if the bird lands between the spikes the bird was okay um, but if the bird landed on a spike, then it would just slide down the dinosaur's back and kind of, well, we can draw one and I'll show you. So this dinosaur lets, now we can't draw the passage of time with art. That's one of the things I'd like to teach my students. But what we can draw are action lines and movement lines and sequence lines. So we can say our bird, uh, maybe this was like a, a red robin bird started here and then it went to land and maybe it was looking at a berry bush here so we can draw some berries you're just gonna draw a series of hexagons for a berry bush uh, with gentle edges and so maybe it was distracted when it just sat on here and uh, really you know kind of hurt it kind of a fatal injury and then later in time so we can draw a clock also to show the passage of time and then we can show the bird we can do an X for their eyes uh, when animals die they're not sure why this happens but their eyes kind of change to this X shape and then the feet will kind of go up in the air kind of really dramatic almost like a like a diva way to die um, but that's just how uh, nature is and then so anyway, the bird, after it died and rolled down the dinosaur's back, would sit here and just get kind of gross. I mean, it would rot and everything. And so hygiene-wise, dinosaurs, like the Tyrannosaurus rex, uh, notably, um, other dinosaurs did avoid them because of the stench. And it really wasn't their fault. It was just they can't really reach to clean their backs with their really short arms uh, or remove the stinking bird um, that has unfortunately landed on its uh, spikes here. So now we're just going to continue um, with our feature lines, our contour lines. Now interestingly, uh, I well I do like to teach my students science while I'm teaching you sketching. And interestingly, uh, dinosaurs evolved from uh, chimpanzees. Uh, so they're all mammals, which is a type of animal. Uh, chimpanzees actually originated in the ocean um, thousands of years ago and slowly over time the chimpanzee uh, crawled its way out and developed uh, its gills transitioned into lungs so it can convert carbon dioxide into oxygen which is the uh, which is the same that plants do. Plants, see plants and animals both uh, take in carbon dioxide and exhale carbon monoxide uh, sometimes dinosaurs could have like a light, well, very similar to like an older man, uh, just some kind of stray hairs. Um, this Tyrannosaurus rex looks like it's floating in the air, but don't be fooled. What we're going to do is we're just going to make our grass a little bit longer. And this is how you have to use uh, wherewithal. I uh, do like to teach my students about wherewithal. And as, you, as you're sketching your masterpiece, you want to be mindful. So, so this dinosaur just happens to be up on a hill, which is fine, a grassy knoll, perhaps. A little safe place to, to be, a grassy knoll. Maybe a good place to be if you're a predator looking to attack is a grassy knoll because you kind of have a good vantage point of other animals. And so we also need uh, to fill in some space there because in reality, uh, you didn't just have like a dinosaur and one flower, correct? Correct. Uh, so we're gonna do, we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. Um, well, this bird's already dead, uh, but I meant that in a metaphorical sense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some, um, some balance to this picture because it's just white right here. And we're also going to do some uh, scaling. So how do we know that this dinosaur, similar to uh, some other classes we've taken, but this will just reinforce that. How do we know this dinosaur is not the size of a small tadpole? 
and that this flower is um, only seen with an electron microscope. Well, we need scale. We need scaling. We need to show uh, this bird could be like a mini bird or something, you know, a hummingbird could be a giant to this bird. Everything relative to the dinosaur could be super small. You could only see it in a microscope. So we're going to add a picture of the sun. Uh, and don't be fooled, the sun is one of the hard, now the hardest thing to draw is the human nose, but the sun is not a joke. Uh, another interesting fact, if the sun were to go out right now, hypothetically, uh, we would be able to see that immediately uh, because light travels at the speed of light and that's instantaneous across the universe, across vast spaces, uh, vast distances. So just to put that into perspective for you. All right, so now we have a comparison. We can kind of get a better idea of uh, what size our dinosaur is. Uh, ah, well, interestingly, the dinosaurs were extinguished by a large rock falling from outer space. Uh, most scientists think that a large object, unknown object, hit the moon, which ejected a large piece of the moon. So what we can do is we can actually sketch some science, stitch or weave in uh, some science into our uh, sketch here and, and really show off for your friends and, and, and for your buddies, for your pals. Or your girlfriends too. So what we're showing here is just the, maybe a comet. So here's the comet striking the moon. And again, we can't draw motion or sound. So this would have made a huge sound, right, an impact in outer space, but what we can do is draw sound lines and action lines. Sound lines are a little bit shorter in length than action lines, and just to reinforce this, we can write the word boom. There's nothing wrong with writing um, clear words that, that kind of support what you're trying to sketch out, and I think um, students before long, you will be able to appreciate with me um, how photorealistic this becomes. It's really almost magical how we start with just a blank piece of paper and we end up with something that uh, could fool most people into thinking it's an actual photograph. Uh, maybe uh, somebody going backwards in time was able to take this picture. All right, so moving on. So this hit here, number one, and then this ejected, so we can put a crack in the moon here. This ejected a large piece of the moon which is falling to the earth and it starts to catch on fire because uh, the moon and comets, any type of space rock is gonna have a lot of alcohol in it, which is a type of gasoline. And so any little spark in the atmosphere is gonna ignite it. And so as it came crashing down, it kicked up a lot of uh, grass and dirt. And so, Here's your answer. It kicked up a lot of dirt, which got in the nose or the nostrils of the dinosaurs and also in their mouth. And if you have a mouth full of grass and dirt, you're not gonna be able to breathe. And it went up so high that it also got the flying dinosaurs called the pterodactyls. So we can draw a pterodactyl right here. They're just basically like a smaller uh, Tyrannosaurus. They've got big old teeth and those round dinosaur eyes and they also had the ball at the end of their tails and then they had the claws and so that dirt and grass and vegetation is going to go in the in these uh, pterodactyls as well all right now what can we do well we can draw a horizon we need a horizon so let's go ahead and draw that students And maybe our bird had some shading here. Well, maybe right here we could do a little stream. I mentioned frog earlier. Well, prehistoric frogs had four jumping legs. So let's go ahead and uh, sketch out a frog. And they had big old lips. So current modern frogs have, you know, have just one powerful back leg, but the old frogs so like a few thousand years ago, they had, so they could jump forwards, <coughs> excuse me, or backwards. And this frog maybe, uh, frogs have really long tongues, so maybe it was sticking its tongue out uh, to capture uh, 
like a really tiny dinosaur. So uh, dinosaur, again, um, there was no size uh, minimum to dinosaurs. So maybe this dinosaur was, maybe this frog was like a dragon or a monster. Um, yeah, so there was no size limit to dinosaurs. So this dinosaur was <coughs> maybe distracted. You can see it looking backwards because it saw an even smaller dinosaur. Oh, I'd probably draw this this front leg too long. Uh, what we can do is kind of change this. This takes a little bit of skill here. So now there's your front arm and your other front arm. And these are just rocks. Uh, if you can't replicate this today, it's all right. It's taken me a long time to be able to do this. And maybe this little dinosaur was looking at an even smaller dinosaur. So you can see uh, the positive feedback loop. You can see how um, all of the dirt going in the larger dinosaur's mouth kind of would drive you, um, well, it would affect their mental health. And you can start to see a um, little bit of chaos here, mental chaos with uh, the dinosaurs. This dinosaur looking, this dinosaur looking, this dinosaur. And pretty soon you're just going to have all the dinosaurs eating each other up or uh, suffocating on the grass and such. Uh, there were cavemen when dinosaurs existed. Uh, similar to um, what we mentioned Cleopatra, there's cavemen and cavewomen. Uh, cavemen and cavewomen did not, or the uh, razor was not invented yet, so they had uh, wild hair and they had really uh, thick eyebrows. Um, intellectually speaking, they were identical to what we had today. They just didn't have the benefit of all the hundreds of years that we've had, uh, thousands of years that we've had to, to develop, uh, say like soda pop, um, rulers, uh, toilet paper, and candy, computers, and we definitely want to get some ears in there. And uh, people, a long time ago, because of calcium deficiencies, usually grew to like, say, two feet. Well, how do we know this cave person is two feet? This cave man, this is a cave man. Well, we look at the sun, we get our perspective. We. This, this caveman seems a little, uh, I won't say duplicitous, but um, a little sneaky, conniving, almost like a shyster. We can't see what our hands are doing. Um, and plus, it's probably not the best place to be right under this dinosaur. But if the meteor hit, uh, this person probably was not going to live too long, too. So that's why we could draw like a cave. So if we go back above the horizon here, we could draw like a man cave oh, and a woman cave here. And then since it's dark in the cave, what we can do is just draw. Uh, this is a trick I learned um, at the particular art school that I went to. And so you can just color around these white circles. And then it looks like you have, oops, I messed up that spike on the back of that Tyrannosaurus Rex. Looks like you have somebody peering out of that dinosaur. And maybe, um, of course, they needed fire too, so maybe they have a chimney. Maybe it was cold. It's not going to be cold for long with uh, with this meteor crashing down. All right, so you have five seconds to grab your highlight and color markers. One, two, three, four, five, all right, so today I've chosen the color yellow. Uh, yellow is one of my favorite colors, and we don't have to color the entire scene. We don't have to use all the colors. Um, that's not that realistic so we just the professional artist is just going to be very selective with their coloring um, so maybe the cave person was yellow just because they've been in the sun a lot so that's realistic um, and we all know that flowers can be yellow um, some frogs some some species of frogs uh, and we can translate that uh, to to back then as well they could be yellow Almost looks like fruit striped gum. I was never allowed to have candy or toys or gum or even a picture on my wall until I was a, an adolescent. Uh, and that's one of the, the types of gum or candy that I always wanted to try was fruit striped gum. Um, I spent most of my time spot mopping. Uh, spot mopping was a way for me to bond with my uh, grandmother. 
All right, so we've got the sun. Anything else? Yep, well, these baby dinosaurs, who's just, are little dinosaurs, almost like a minnow. A minnow is just a, a really small fish, but you can, uh, you can have a grown-up minnow that's really small, right? All right, maybe these berries, these succulent berries were yellow that this bird looked at before it unfortunately landed and met its demise on this Tyrannosaurus rex spike. All right, now you have two seconds to get your outline markers. <clears throat> One, two. All right, so we're not going to outline everything. We're just going to outline certain uh, features in our drawing because we want to honor reality. Light's going to hit different things in different ways depending on just random positioning of how the particular object is in relation to the where the sun source is coming from or the light source is coming from. Correct? Correct. Okay, I'm just going to highlight the feet. And Tyrannosaurus rexes were bullied to a point uh, based on the archaeological evidence, uh, mainly because of their unusually small arms. And then we have our dead, decaying bird right here. Um, again, this contributed to the not so pleasant hygienic properties of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So, so not only were they bullied and they were loners, um, and this made them be um, based on available evidence. Scientists have inferred um, that they were probably sociopathic. Um, with the end result meaning some of them probably committed uh, some pretty heinous crimes. Now, he, this dinosaur did not have to, uh, did not intentionally affect this bird. It was just, the bird was looking at the succulent berries. So I hope you've learned something today. I, I hope, uh, as far as the science, uh, you can go tell your friends and family. Um, but, but I do like to stress that for all of my students, you need to demand that you need at least around three hours each day to rest your sketching wrists and arms. Um, that's if you have children, if you're a single parent, uh, that's really not an excuse. If you're going to be in my class, you need to have that time uh, to really relax and do nothing, to just sit and recharge those uh, sketching muscles. Up oh, and then our caveman. Kind of a bushy beard there. And this caveman was probably an omnipotent, omnipivore. So they would eat uh, vegetables and dinosaur meat, depending on what was available. So maybe this flower, uh, this, this caveman, it looks like the wind's blowing this way, doesn't it? All right, so I think we're, oh, uh, we've got our cave here. And again, uh, you have a, maybe the cave woman's looking out at her cave husband over here. Oh, and then we need to do our cave frog or our a dinosaur frog, a prehistoric frog. And remember they had two jumping power legs in the front and the back. And then of course the uh, micro dinosaurs. Almost looks like a chicken. Um, fun fact, interesting segue, uh, modern chickens that we eat uh, without even thinking about it evolved from the dinosaur. All right, folks, there you have it. So we've sketched out a photorealistic scene of a dinosaur and uh, just some uh, supplemental material that we might expect to see during this time. And I think anybody, if you showed them and you were able to follow along with me today, uh, minimally follow along with me, I think anybody would be hard pressed to distinguish this uh, from an actual high-definition or ultra-high-definition uh, photograph. 
Uh, well, I hope you learned something today, folks. And if you were unable to attain the level of mastery and elegance and sophistication that I have uh, exhibited today, uh, do not fret. Uh, take, it takes time. It's taken me years and years and years. A lot of it is genetic, I should say. Uh, but uh, if you don't want to give up, then certainly I would keep trying it, at least for a bit. Um, all right. Well, as I always say, thank you for watching Advanced Next Step Sketching Techniques. And, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day.